Hi there, night people, hello lady and gentlemen. Today I am doing a sequel to the recently released video where I unbox and uh, describe and then test unsuccessfully Microtech MSI, which is Microtech's first venture into the world of crossbar locks. And the knife is right here on the table, it's disassembled. And I am going to talk about why it failed the test and how am I going to fix it. And then in the end, I'll test it again. All right, I partially disassembled it already. Uh, the screws are out, but I can still show you. This knife operates on a crossbar lock that I can uh, slide back and then allows blade to rotate out of lock. And uh, as you can see, Unlike Benchmade Axis Lock, this RAM lock, as they call it, is operated by a regular coil spring. And you can see the spring in the space there. See it right there uh, behind the crossbar, be behind the RAM head. I'm going to call this a RAM head. I think it's appropriate for a RAM lock. So the RAM head, uh, you, as you can see, there's also a space in the front of it. And that's what was puzzling me from the moment I unboxed the knife. It, the cutout is designed to be conforming to the shape of the ram head. So why is it not all the way out there? The reason I see it as a problem, I'm going to illustrate using my customized griptilian. As you can see, this huge gap here allows me to insert a metal rod. It's inside this lanyard here. And this metal rod is there so that I can, uh, if I do something kind of, some kind of very heavy duty chopping, batoning, or something else that a pocket knife should not be doing, I can jam that uh, lanyard and the, then the weave on the outside kind of keeps it locked in. And then when I smack the knife or baton the knife or even spine test the knife, uh, it makes it impossible for this crossbar to move back and it becomes de facto a solid knife. You could see in the previous video that this lock failed on the spine whack test. Microtech version of the crossbar lock. And that was a mistake. Uh, I wanted to see why this knife unlocked so easily with a massive ram head right here that shouldn't have happened all right knife people how about some reverse engineering here liners are critical in this design they connect everything from the blade and moving the stresses back toward the back spacer and then distributing some of them to the scales because there is a recess in the scales that actually holds everything together so it's uh, akin to the trunion on the gun uh, designed to absorb stresses from the front all the way to the back. So the stress impulse travels from the blade to the pin, from the pin to the liner, from the liner to the backspacer via that there is another pin there. So this knife is designed for extremely heavy duty action. So it's really annoyed. I really did not expect it to unlock so easily. What I wanted to demonstrate here is how this crossbar or ram head works. And this ram head is an absolute key to the strength of the knife because it creates the engagement between the blade and the backstop pin using the surface that I'm pointing to, which has a small shallow ramp. And when the ram head moves forward, that ramp creates downward and forward pressure onto the blade and then the blade reacts with the pin and gets arrested in that position. The interaction between all these elements is critical. So when I see a two millimeter gap between the ram head and the liners, I am concerned. I think that's not what designer intended. And the reason I think so is because this ram head has a lot of mass. It's a pretty heavy piece. And when I strike uh, the wood with the spine of the blade, it generates impulse, which in turn creates enough inertia in the ram head to move it back. And right now, it only needs to move back about one and a half, two millimeters, whereas if it was all the way to the end of the slot, that motion would be more like four to five millimeters. 
and having the ram head all the way forward would have prevented this accident. So here's the blade fully rotated and then the same ram head, see how it nests in there? So that's the backstop, that prevents the blade from striking those pins right here, those spacers. There's a lot of design effort that was put in this knife. So to see it partially dysfunctional uh, is annoying. So I just pulled up on the on the ram head and uh, the spring and its pin came out. This is the ramp right here and you can see how far the blade has traveled on this ramp. And that's what uh, creates a downward pressure in in this direction which in turn translates into the up and back pressure on this pin, making it supposedly very strong lock, so disappointing. So I conclude that the blade and the ramp don't fully engage and that the ramp needs to travel farther toward the front of the knife to assure a full engagement between all the components. This ram head is actually a heat treated piece of steel and uh, I have uh, hardness testing files here and actually even the hardest one of them, which is marked uh, 65 Rockwell hardness, is skidding right off it. So the blade is below, by the looks of it, the hardness of this piece. So what I did, I grabbed uh, my WorkSharp diamond plates from WorkSharp Precision Adjust Pro. I'm going to work my way down in grid size from 220. and remove materials slowly. I remove some material. Let's see the engagement. Have I moved it? Yes, the, so the gap started to close. So I'm gonna take the 320 next and this is, I'm gonna continue to do this. Let's take a quick look. Right, it's moving in that right direction. The only place that I'm removing the material from the blade is this point that engages the ramp. I'm very careful to maintain the radius that engages the ramp on the ram head. Let's give it a few more passes here. So I just went to st straight to 600. Time to check it out. It looks like I reduced the gap by about 50%. This process continues yeah. until I'm satisfied that the ramp can traverse all the way to the very end of the slot. Okay. The whole process takes about 40 minutes. And finally, I'm satisfied with the traverse of the ram head to the point where I'm cleaning the surface using the ceramic plate and then the stroking plate that were provided through the WorkSharp Precision Adjust. Okay, and let's drop it and then, I don't know if stropping is necessary. But this is the main engagement surface between the ram head and the blade. Okay. Now we're gonna do a grand rehearsal. Basically, the air gap between the front of the ram head and the front of the slot on the liner is gone. I think that was the original intent of the designer of this knife, but the manufacturing process at Microtech does not involve hand fitment. For $176, I did not expect a hand fitted quality from Microtech. However, Lock to blade engagement is not a place to take shortcuts in production. And now I'm gonna drop this bearing back in. These are double row synthetic frame ceramic ball bearings. Double row for much more surface engagement. So to do this, I already learned you need to pull the lock back and then it holds everything in place. Everything is clicked right here. The way this knife assembles, it's a dream. All I have to do is replace the scale right now. And because of the recess, 
it fits nicely to the frame, very minimal alignment required, and uh, everything goes right into place. Awesome design, awesome. I used T20 bit to reinstall the pivot screw. Some smaller screwdriver sets don't have this bit, so but you will find one on your folding bicycle Torx wrench set. As long as your wrenches are in good shape, you're pretty safe. Just don't crank on it. Not a lot of torque is required to tighten. Now we tighten all the screws using the T8 bit. Make some final adjustments, test the function, and uh, when satisfied, you know, knife is ready to go. Okay, now I need to figure out a safe way to retest the spine whack test. And to do that, I have to remove the pocket clip because it'll be in the way. All right, <clears throat> I used my hand last time, so now I came up uh, with this clamping system which imitates, there's a little bit of a play, just like in the human hand. The blade is arrested here, the pivot, and it's held in place pretty snugly. Uh, when I did the tree strikes, uh, I did. I was wearing just a basic glove, now I'm wearing a welding glove, welding uh, apron, face shield, and this is a brace, uh, which has hard plastic in there, so if anything goes wrong, I reduce the probability as much as I could. And uh, here we go, I'm gonna hold it out of the way like this and whack it just like I did on the tree. So it seems to be working with the mat and now I'm going to try it on a bare wood just to make sure that the cushioning from the mat wasn't giving me false positives here. Well, I can't complain. Finally, I did something right, and it looks like my repairs or fixes worked. Just for giggles, I want to give this um, 940 Osborne a whack or two because it's unlocked on me once, and it will validate that my test setup is acceptable. By which I mean it can induce failure. Yeah, it's working. And while I have the 940 out, I look at this, guys. Does anybody else see what I see here? I The whole time I thought they're after bug out with this knife, but now that I have the Osborne sitting next to it, I see a lot of resemblance. So I think uh, Microtech just gave Benchmade a shot across the bow to get out of their OTF territory or else we're gonna flood the market with a cool, robust, and just decently priced uh, ram locks. But in my humble opinion, uh, we as a consumer benefit from this little knife bores that they have because look at these products. This is a beautiful Benchmade Phaeton. I love this knife. And uh, of course, nothing wrong with Microsoft Ultratech. Microsoft. Microtech Ultratech. But if Microsoft made this knife, it would have sucked. So Microtech was sticking with that name. And then finally, I think this, I'm surprised there's not much more buzz and rave about this knife, the shootout. The shootout is incredibly uh, revolutionary design in the world of uh, 
OTFs, I think, and a much stronger knife than it uh, seems to look to you guys because everybody's used to these beefy aluminum or steel handles, and um, this guy is so light. But having taken it apart, I have to say, very innovative product. But I like that they're fighting it out, slugging it out, and I think we all will benefit from this. In conclusion, I would like to show you before and after measurements. So before I started on this project, the gap was 1.7 millimeters or 0 0.067, 67 thousandths you can of an see, inch. And after I finished with it, the gap it was reduced great. to about three, three and a half Absolutely thousandths no of an inch or 0 0.08 millimeter. No backlash on the unlock. Uh, it just as flicky as it was. Um, you know, no complaints. My hand is healing and I am in Zen. This is my current go-to EDC.